Joining me today to discuss Hispanic Heritage Month is Councilman at Large, Frank Cuesta. How are you, Councilman? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Now, Councilman, it's been a while since uh, you've been on the show, and you recently retired from principal from the Elizabeth School System. H how are you enjoying your retirement? Uh, I'm enjoying my retirement after 34 years uh, in the Elizabeth School uh, System. Uh, but quite frankly, I, I, I miss the students, I miss the teachers, I miss the parents. I miss the opportunity to, to serve uh, those individuals uh, directly. Now, if memory serves me right, I think you had me when I was in first grade, so. I, I really <laughs> <laughs> so, retirement, what, what are you doing now? You're hunting, you're fishing, golf, what is it? No, I really haven't been able to do those things yet. <laughs> uh, I am actually helping my wife a lot. I, I, I cook every day, believe it or not. I uh, spend more quality time with my children, and that's very important to me. So that part of retirement, I, I am enjoying being able to support mm -hmm. my family uh, in those areas of need. Now, I know you love children, you love education, and in doing so, I understand you started a uh, scholarship program. How's that working out? Yes, uh, about six years ago, <coughs> excuse me, about six years ago, with the help of teachers and a couple of administrators, uh, I established a scholarship program that is called Elizabeth's Promise. But Elizabeth's Promise really uh, originated in the uh, late 70s when I was a teacher at Elizabeth High School. But six years ago, I had the opportunity to be an administrator at the Upper Academy. Mm -hmm. And I was truly inspired by the students there mm -hmm. to continue the scholarship program. So it, it came alive again, so to speak. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy to say that the uh, scholarship continues very strong today. Now, a student that's in need, how can they apply for the scholarship? Well, students can apply by going online uh, and completing an application. That application will be available uh, probably around mid-November. Uh, but if they want immediate information, they can talk to their guidance counselors because their guidance mm -hmm. counselors are aware uh, of the scholarship program. Uh, what we're trying to do now is to expand, not expand, but make sure that uh, the private schools uh, guidance counselors are also aware mm -hmm. of the scholarship because really the scholarship is for anyone who resides in the city of Elizabeth right. regardless of where they attend school. Now for those who have uh, <coughs> won previously, have you had any contact with those? Oh, I am so proud to say that most of those uh, uh, recipients uh, of Elizabeth's Promise Awards uh, stay in touch with me, mm -hmm. uh, they email me, they call me, uh, they come to visit. Uh, as a matter of fact, recently I met with a young man by the name of George Casalins, a uh, Colombian-American student who is presently in Greece, mm. uh, taking advantage of uh, an opportunity that Rutgers University uh, offers. Wow. So I, I stay in touch with many, many of those students. Now, if someone wants to establish a specific uh, scholarship, how, how can they do so? Well, anyone can establish a scholarship, but according to the criteria we created, then that person would have to sponsor the scholarship, mm -hmm. and that scholarship uh, would be at least $1,000. Okay. Now, and the next upcoming scholarship event is when? Well, we're planning a fundraiser um, early, uh, early January, but we really have not set uh, the time or date yet. Uh, the one thing that we have mm -hmm. done already and we are very excited about this. We have selected uh, Miss Becky Aiello, an English teacher at the Upper Academy, uh, as the person that we're going to uh, dedicate uh, the scholarship dinner to that will be held the first Friday in, in May. Uh, Miss Aiello is well respected and admired by students and parents alike, and we're very excited that she accepted uh, to be part of this event. And, and by the way, she has been one of the main supporters mm -hmm. since the, uh, the first year of the scholarship. Well, I must commend you and the others involved because you're doing an excellent job. I know not too long ago I witnessed one of the recipients getting their award and, and tears came down and it was a, a really touching moment because the young lady was really in need of the dollars to go to school and without that scholarship she wouldn't be able to do it. So I remember that evening yeah. very well and yeah. it, it, you're right, it was a very emotional moment right. and I was proud of the fact that, uh, that you were there and some of her uh, former teachers right where they had to support yeah. her also because she, she was the kind of person that really needed that support and, and she's putting it to good use nowadays. Now, as we transition, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month is underway. Correct. And being that you're retired now, you can do everything. So you can I have, I have time. And Hispanic I have Heritage time, Month. yes. So Hispanic Heritage Month is underway and, and you've come up with an event to celebrate the diverse culture that makes up the Hispanic community. Uh, tell us about it and how you came up with the idea. Well, with the help of several several individuals uh, uh, like Alina Alvarez, 
uh, Onita Duran, uh, Elizabeth Cano, uh, Mickey Colon, just to mention a few, we came up with the idea of planning a, an activity for October 15th, which is really the culmination of Hispanic Heritage Month, because it starts September 15th and it goes through uh, October 15th. And, and we came up with the idea of uh, inviting uh, the 21 speaking um, representatives from the 21 speaking countries in the world to, uh, to show that day part of the culture, part of the heritage. Uh, and we're happy to say that uh, so far we have uh, uh, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, uh, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, Mexico, Peru, and Uruguay have already made a commitment mm. to participate in the program, but we anticipate that the rest of the countries will always join us in, in this uh, wonderful activity. How many performers do you have, and uh, do you think that every Latin uh, Ameri American country will be presented? That's the goal. The goal is that every Latin American country will be represented, and we are hoping uh, for two performances per country. Mm -hmm. and, and we're very excited, very excited about this activity. Uh, and there are other things happening uh, for example, I know that on October 6, uh, Alina uh, Alvarez is planning a, a, a health uh, clinic, uh, primarily um, intended for the Hispanic community because there's a high um, number of individuals with cholesterol and high blood pressure and what have you. However, the event is open to the entire community and will take place uh, October 6, between nine, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning at 1349 North Broad Street, North Avenue in Elizabeth. Now, how important is it for Hispanics to share in each other's culture? I think it's extremely important because sometimes uh, we forget that even though we have the language in common, we have, we have customs that are different. Uh, many of us come from uh, somewhat different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, in Central America, there's a, there's a very strong uh, Indian background. Uh, in the uh, Caribbean, there's a very strong uh, African uh, uh, mm -hmm. background. So I, I think it's important for us to come together as a community, not only for us, mm -hmm. but also for the entire uh, community uh, in Elizabeth. Now, when you talk about the entire community and the Hispanic community, uh, what about the, the younger Hispanics who were born here? Uh, how does this help them stay connected with their roots? Well, this is one of the, uh, um, the main factors mm -hmm. that motivates our group to, to organize such an event because it is extremely important uh, for us to, to, uh, to incorporate the youth in many of these activities. And I'm proud to say that many of the performers will be the young people of our city. Mm -hmm. and, and it's important for them to connect because it's important for them to, mm -hmm. to understand where they came from. And I think it, it, it enhances their uh, self-esteem mm -hmm. and, and therefore they do better in school and they do better in society. Okay, and once again, tell us when and where the event will take place. The event will take place on October 15th, which is a Saturday, between 12 noon and 5 p.m., right on the steps of City Hall. Okay, and I want to correct something I said earlier when I said that you were my teacher in first grade. That's not true. And when anyone sitting home thinking <laughs> it was actually second grade. So. It was second grade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us today, Councilman. Thank you very much. It's my so, pleasure. And I look forward to joining you at the Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. Looking forward to seeing you there. Okay. And once again, if someone wants to contact or get some additional information, is there a way they, they can reach out to someone on the committee? Yes. Or? They, they, should, they should contact me at 908-352-9889. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We'll be back with the second half of our city discussing some of the upcoming events with the flu shots. Thank you. And we'll be back with the second half after this. Thank mm -hmm. you.